All right, just a quick little handheld update here on my uh, TR-108 Pi Quarter, which is a Raspberry Pi-based tricorder replica from Star Trek uh, that has a bunch of real sensors in it. You can see in the front here, it's got a thermal camera, 8x8 pixel thermal camera. It's got an environmental sensor package here from Bosch called the BME680 and uh, a bunch of lights and everything. Uh, I've been working on this for a little while. This is still just a prototype. This is the second prototype. Uh, I'm hoping to get a production done soon of like everything I've learned from both prototypes, but let's take a look. Okay, I got sounds and stuff going, so feast your ears. Couldn't really hear it there, but I got the hinge click working and everything. It's a little quiet. I need to play with the sound. You can hear it's really crackly. Let's take a close in look here. Got all the lights working. This light here is actually the activity light of the Raspberry Pi. I wired it in, so that actually responds to this, the, uh, the activity of the uh, Raspberry Pi. So it, go, it only goes off when the Pi is off. So even when the hinge is closed, it still stays on, just to let me know the Pi is on, because this is a mobile device now. I've got a battery in it. You can carry it around. It's, there's no wires. As you can see, it's uh, footloose and fancy free. Um, got all my stickers in there, a little bit better, you know, fit and finish than the first one. I, I tweak things kind of, not really, uh, but it looks like they're holding down for now. I still need, you know, the final one will have a black emerge square. I know that's not correct, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out right now. Everything in the software, everything is running multi-threaded right now. It's Python, so about as multi-threaded as you can get. Uh, which means that all the sounds, all the input handling, and the light changes are, you know, concurrent threads that run on their own and respond to global variables, which probably is the wrong way to do it, but that's how I'm doing it. Uh, you can see button presses are really slow, so I just press the settings page button, the bio button, and we'll just wait for it to load the settings page. <laughs> I got a lot of work to do to make this uh, more usable. Once you're in the settings page, though, you know, it's pretty responsive just like the old version, but you know, you can see that screen draws have been slowed down. It's because all the threads are really just sharing one thread and it's chopped up and given to each of them one at a time and like piecemeal handed out. So it's not actually faster, but it does mean that my lights now and the door responds instantly, whereas before it would have had to be at its point in the loop waiting for its chance to do something. Uh, so now I can just run, and everything's on interval timers, so I'm not screaming along doing all the, the lights and input, but there is a, a little bit of uh, performance hit to the rest of the loop, as you can see. Well, I, I press settings again. It should take us back to the multi-frame page again, uh, multi-graph page, but uh, it's going to take a while. Let's just suck it in. There it goes. Screen uh, viewing angle isn't great. These were like $3 screens from uh, AliExpress. ST7735 screens. Uh, just running off uh, the SPI bus, the SPI bus on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this though. It's, it's looking like a real tricorder. Here's the forward facing array. A little bit of light bleed there, but not too bad, not too bad. I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'll make a cutout that goes on the inside that isolates the ripple bar, because the ripple bar seems to be really susceptible to bleed. It's right in between, like it's surrounded on all sides with powerful, uh, you know, a yellow and a red light. <laughs> and blue too, like it just seems to really wash everything out, but still looks pretty good. I like how the AMG 8833 sensor worked out. It fits pretty good in there. It kind of looks like the original front panel from the prop. You know, I'll never be perfect with this big honking front part here, but I, I wanted to get that right, or at least make it look okay. And with that blue barrel on top, gosh, it looks like a legitimate piece of 24th century technology to my eyes. Sorry, can you tell I'm a little, I'm a little stoked to ha finally have a tricorder? It's close, I'm getting real close, like I'm almost done. This is like a, God, this is like a 20 year project almost. You know, well not the pie quarter, but a homemade tricorder. Anyways, I just wanted to show it off. Here, listen to that hinge click when it closes. Haha, 
there's an extra Hall effect sensor down here that measures door close. Stole that little uh, tidbit from uh, popular prop replica makers. Sorry, boys. Stealing all the best ideas on this one, except uh, response time. There's a whole bunch of us making tricorders right now. We're, there's a Discord I set up. A whole bunch of great projects on there. Uh, you should check it out. If you're making your own tricorder, please share what you're doing with us so we can steal your ideas. A big problem in the community right now is hinges. We think we almost have that sorted. My hinges are terrible. Um, there's a lot of really good ideas out there for hinges. This is not one of them. But as you can see, I mean, it works. You got a battery in here, some LEDs. I'm running, I think, three wires. Yeah, plus, uh, plus five ground. Like the battery, actually not plus five, the battery voltage ground. And then I pass back another plus five from the, the, uh, you know, the battery discharge recharge circuit that's separate in here. I actually had a bit of a problem with this one when I built it. <laughs> I left some wires just flapping around in the breeze and uh, actually fried my power supply. So uh, I'm just using a cheapo one from eBay right now. I'm hoping to get the tiny UPS in here again so I can get some like battery telemetry, know how, you know, uh, get an alert if it's a low battery situation, things like that. But uh, yeah, that's how things are going right now. Let me see if I can call up the uh, the uh, thermal camera here. It's going to take a few seconds. Look at this. You can see the side of the screen is messed up. This AMG 8833 is actually, uh, I salvaged it, you know, because of Chip again. And I was like, oh man, I can't buy these anymore. I had a breakout board of one. I used it for my first sensor board, which I had to scrap because it had tons of problems. This is the third revision sensor board now. <laughs> it's got the, the same AMG 8833. I managed to buy an AMG 8833 uh, off DigiKey recently, but I haven't taken it out of the package yet. I'm just using this one. So I think in the process of being put on three different boards, I've kind of damaged it. You see the sides of the display constantly show high and low. But it does seem to pick things up in the middle. Here, it takes a long time to refresh, but you can see my hand in there. You know, it's not very accurate, but it's just for fun, right? This is just a prototype too. I also have on the board now a, instead of having an, a spot for a specific sensor, it's just got a general uh, I2C um, sensor in there, or sorry, I2C connection, uh, just a header, uh, through hole header connection that you could just wire in your own thing. So that's the plan, figure out, I think I'm gonna get a non-contact thermometer in there and try and get that working. But anyways, this does work. You can see it shows high and low and average. And uh, yeah, it's nothing too fancy. Proof of concept anyways. There's my hand, right? There you go. It's a legitimate sensor data acquisition tool and it's handheld. So there you go, the PyCorder TR 109, sorry, I probably called it 108 earlier. It's the 109. TR 109, this is prototype unit 01, which I'm codenaming Sternbach, because it's the most sternbach -y looking one I've done. And I think this is the shell I'm going with for the final one, because it looks most like the one, I think it looks like a Mark 7 from TNG. Anyways. Thanks for listening to me go on about it. I'm just, I'm pleased as punch about this thing. It looks awesome. It sounds pretty good too. A lot of work to do on the software side, but you know, I'll get there. Now that I got a working prototype I can mess around with. Um, I'm just, I'm just hacking away at it, you know? So look forward to seeing a more in-depth build video at some point, but for now I just wanted to show it off because I'm lazy and I got no time these days. So this is about the best I can do for now. But it exists. It's alive. I have a heartbeat. Um, it's slow as hell, but it's a start. I'm going to try putting a banana pie in here, which is like a quad core pie zero or something. And uh, everybody on the Discord is talking about it. Uh, we're trying to get it all set up. Uh, I have one. I, I haven't set it up yet, but I'm going to try it on the old prototype shell I have. Uh, and see if I can get some better performance out of that. I mean, I should, but we don't know if there's going to be gotchas with, um, you know, the different ar architecture. Anyways, that's my story for now. Uh, I hope you like it. Thanks again for watching, uh, making this obsession seem 
somewhat worthwhile by being able to share it with people. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. So long.